Hi guys. Hello. Welcome to Ed Arlene's Spirit Cast. If you're new to this podcast, we talk about all things related to mindfulness, magic, astrology, tarot, Reiki, um, spirituality in general, anything in that realm. And today's episode is about astrology. And in particular, we're going to be talking about the elements in your astrological chart. And um, so it's a really cool episode. It's just going to be Arlene and I. And before we get into it, do you want to tell them where they can find us at? So you can go and follow us over on Twitter at edpro underscore pgh. We tweet a lot. You can follow us on Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, Facebook, TikTok, at Ed Arlene. And then you can follow us over on YouTube and like and subscribe to get some free Reiki. We post it almost every single day. And if you go to our website, you can send it to our email list. You get a free Reiki session once a month. I just want to take a quick moment to invite everyone listening to check out our shop at edarlene.com. If you like what we do, it is one of the most simple ways to support us. Plus, you will get some sweet, sweet handcrafted goods like our amazing 100% soy candles, which also come in our energy kits, such as Moonchild and Let That Shit Go. If you love our quotes, we have them available for print in a variety of formats. And of course, there's our book pre-orders, and it is also the best place to go if you would like to book a Reiki session with us. All of this can be found at edarlene.com and linked in the show notes. Here's a quick note from one of our sponsors, and then we'll get into today's awesome episode. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, let me give you a rundown. Basically, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Here's how it works. Anchor lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to most popular listening platforms, including Spotify, with a single tap. Anchor is also the only place you can publish video podcasts to Spotify. With Anchor, creators can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Okay, so we're just gonna get into the elements in the chart. So how this idea came to me was uh, I was on TikTok because I'm fully, fully addicted. And I guy had posed a question for witch talk. And he basically wanted to know what the elements meant in his astrological chart. And in particular, um, he was referencing how we have a certain number of elements. And he wanted to know if his element was completely missing. So let's say he didn't have any error in his chart, what that meant, and did that mean that's what he sought out? So I usually don't like respond to people or anything on on any social apps, (laughs) I would say, (laughs) unless it's like our business, right? Yeah, unless unless it's like relevant or it garners a immediate response because you're all about protecting your energy and doing things when... It's meant to happen. Yeah. So like, and once you get done with your to-do list, then you will message. Like, but you don't operate at all. Like I operate, and it definitely saves you. I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> yeah, I w- I didn't want to engage like especially with like witch talk people because I don't want to get into like a not an argument, but I don't want anybody coming at me like you're wrong or anything. I don't know. I just don't want to engage, right? And I mean. I never do it, but I commented this time, and then I was like, well, maybe we should do a podcast episode about that, because a lot of people might be curious about the, um, what those elements mean astrologically. So if, if you are not familiar with astrology in that way, when you look at your astrological chart, um, I'm sure everybody's heard of like an air sign or an earth sign or fire, you know? So all, all zodiac signs are broken down into groups and you have your earth, your air, your fire, and your um, water signs. And then they each have these energies with them. And so um, we're going to reference our favorite book, and that's The Witch's Book of Power for this one again, which we'll link. I know we talk about that book a lot, but he just has a lot of stuff in it. 
and he explains everything very well in my personal opinion, but he's one of our references for this. And um, he calls them elemental frequencies or presets, okay? And, um, you know, it corresponds with your sign. And so how you find what dominant frequency you have is you go through your astrological chart and you count how many of like the signs you have in each one, okay? If you have two elemental frequencies that are both the greatest, then that means that you're dominant in both. So you might be curious, so what does it mean if I'm dominant in in a certain, you know, element in my astrological chart? And what it's referring to is it's like it, it means like the frequency that will help you not like it's like the stuff that naturally comes to you. So it's uh, your natural abilities hold that elemental energy and come to you with ease. And that's going to pertain to your talents, your interests, your magical abilities. And then if you did read his book, he references a lot about finding your home frequency. So your home frequency will have that energy band in it. So we're highly influenced by those bands that we have the most of in our chart. And most of us only have one. Some of us might have two. Now, if you have, like, say, ones that are really close, it means that that second one that's kind of close probably has a strong influence as well. But the one that has the most is the one you're dominant in. Um, am I missing anything? I think I got no, covered. No, I think you're doing really good. Oh. <laughs> I was just letting you let you talk. Uh, I mean, you know well, sometimes the audio will glitch, like, if we're talking at the same time and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we're recording remotely, guys, if, if we sound different. Because, yeah. This is what we're doing. <laughs> No, a lot of people think that their sun sign represents their um, element. So, for example, I'm a Virgo, and that's an earth sign. Though earth energy is very strong in my chart, I actually have the most signs that are in fire. So you can, they don't match, they don't always match your sun sign. So you talk about your trifecta, like your sun, moon, rising, they all might not match what your core, um, you know, energy band is. And the only time that those will come into play is if you're equal in everything, which we'll get into in a little bit. So um, let's talk about an example of what somebody with a dominant frequency might um, experience magically. So uh, like I said earlier, I'm an earth sign with my sun sign, but I have fire dominant which means that I would be great at magic involving creativity, passion, sex, destruction, alchemy, and love, which is interesting, I would say. Uh, I'm very creative, so that's where that fire energy comes into play. Uh, so I think we can go now to our least expressed elements. So our least expressed elements are considered passive bands, and it's a softer energy, but have some form of influence over us. And they, they basically represent the areas in our lives that we are the weakest in. So a person who has low air and low water, um, they could have difficulty in communicating and might be more reserved. Um, so these are also where we're the most vulnerable, magically speaking. I think that's pretty curious. So I like, could you imagine? I wonder if there's somebody out there who knows somebody's chart and they choose to do a spell to harm them, focusing <laughs> on that weakness. <laughs> like, oh, goodness. Could Don't you give people ideas. Jeez. <laughs> well, I could, you know, the karmic <laughs> impact would be crazy. I would well, I, I think it's showing, like, if, you, if you're knowledgeable about these things and about your chart placements, and like you said, someone wants to do something wild, if they know that information, it can be um, more potent. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, like a really powerful, like, you know, magical practitioner. They yeah. could really do fuck fuck some stuff up if they knew. So they would know, for example, um, it's like somebody who was more earth dominant, they would and like had no water, they would probably do something to target them emotionally. And in this book, it depending on like your placements and stuff, like you said earlier, I believe you said it, you have a predisposition for certain types of magic that you'd be better at doing. So if you know that information, you might be able to manifest things easier or, you know, ha do better spell work if you are more proficient at doing high magic or sex magic, like you said earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so that's interesting, too. And a lot of people don't know that. Like, I didn't know that really until we started reading this information. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you could, I mean, imagine a coven where they all knew each other's charts and they could work, you know, balance, like they could equally, like they had somebody in there who could lead like a ceremony for a specific type of magic because they have a natural predisposition for it based off of their astrological chart. Like you could go around, like, I don't know, like that's like hardcore, but I'm sure there are people out there who do that. Oh, um, de- oh, definitely, definitely. Because none of this information is new. <laughs> no, no, no. You know what I mean? Like, like the, the real OG Wicca, Wicca or witchcraft practitioners or magicians know this stuff. It's just, just more mainstream now. Yeah. And it's yeah. in a very digestible way. So that's why you got to get this book. <laughs> <laughs> You can catch up. <laughs> you know I mean? like, like in the back in the day, like there still are a lot of um like resources online and a lot of like libraries that will have a bunch of books from the occult, but you have to weed through that stuff just to get a small portion of this information that's now being redist- redistributed by people like Devin Hunter or um what's his name? I can't remember right now. Um Chris Penzak. Yeah, Chris Penzak. You uh, know who else is good? Scott uh Cunningham, he's really good too. Yeah. So you have these amazing new authors who are know this information and are redistributing it. So why not? Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Even like um, to try to decipher. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're all reading Spirit Speaks right now, and that's like you know amazing that somebody could compile all of that. You yeah. know, we, like we you were saying. Club. We need a book club. We we, we should do. do a book club. Yeah, that's a good idea. It's yeah, uh, instead of being it, it's at Arlene's book club. Let's get yeah. that. Yeah, we all read us, together. We have web, on our website, we have our like library where we have all of our book recommendations at. So go check that out too. But um, people will still ask us like, what do you? Where do I start? Or what should I do? And we have it organized right there. So yeah. join us. It's a really good place to start. And then we'll link. You know, we like to try to link everything at the bottom. Okay, let's talk about the missing elements now. So if you have an elemental band that is not present, according to Vedic astrology, it means you've mastered the lessons of that element in a previous life. So that's something that um think about. So we're here to learn. That's why we like come here. And according to this, each element has these like lessons, like something we have to learn because there's something with all of the lessons. So if we talk about like water signs there's like this emotional component you know or earth that this grounding so there's these things that we need to learn from our elements too and um if it's missing it doesn't mean that you need it it means you've mastered it and that it's naturally included in your operating system so it's like in your standard model like you come already strong and knowledgeable of that element which I thought was really interesting because people often think the reverse that if it's missing, it means that you like, Oh no. (laughs) And it doesn't. So I see people who like people's charts who are missing the element. I'm always like, Oh man, like how old of a soul are you? (laughs) That is an indication of an old soul. Yeah. Yeah. That you were able to master that element. We're old souls, but we're not that old yet. (laughs) No, I don't have anything mass. I, I think I'm getting close. Uh, my, you know, I guess I don't need to tell everybody my weakness, but I probably already did. So mine is, uh, <laughs> not only did you tell them, you told them how, like what to manipulate or whatever to order to research to, to do some serious stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, no, but <laughs> I, I don't believe anybody's going to do anything weird, but my, no, no, no. um, my weakness would be the water well, like emotional stuff. So I, but I'm not sure if it means that I'm getting close to mastering it or if it would be like, that's what I'm going to be learning later. So like maybe I'm going to master fire and it's just going to come within me later. Who knows? Something more rare is when you have all of your elements balanced, you go in your chart and there's equal everything default. You would think, Oh, well having my elements balanced, like that's good. That's good. And I'm not saying it's bad, but it, it means that you're really good at a lot of things, but you don't feel like you're great at one. And your magical and everyday interests are going to be highly influenced by your sun, moon, and rising. Mm. You know, so you might get lucky and have like two of the same, or they all might be the same energy. So let's say your sun, moon, and rising, they were all, uh, 
excuse me, like an air sign and you were equal and all, then you might be more interested in like the air stuff. But people who have a balance it can have a hard time feeling like they're really good at a specific thing. And that's just not magic. That's like everything that they're interested in. Like they're good at it, but they don't feel like they're great or, you know, might be prone to like imposter syndrome, that type of stuff. You know, it's not the goal isn't to have complete elemental balance. Astrologically speaking, it's to understand your unique energy and what you came here to learn and work on. It's understanding what your strengths are, how you can utilize it. So I have all this fire energy. That means I have this like power that I can like use for creativity and stuff like that. And then what I need to work on is like my communication, my understanding, like sympathy, but not that I'm not sympathetic, just like I need to understand those like more emotional aspects of myself and like how to express that stuff. Um, it's really interesting because if you think about your weaknesses personally, it usually is what your, um, you know, your look, because I think you have low water too, even though you're a water sign. I only have one water and I have one air and the rest yeah. of the chart is straight up mostly fire. Mm-hmm. in earth but i have a ton a ton of leo yeah. it's like everything's leo it's all leo so that's why like and, and my rising sat my, my rising's fire so i have a ample amount of fire in my chart and it explains a lot <laughs> yeah yeah but it also explains like like my lacking like like water like especially during like this whole past year like my emotions have been like through the roof but is that because I only have one water in my chart? <laughs> and you're having a hard time dealing with, like, the influence of the other planets are expressing that. Like, I know yeah. last year was crazy astrologically, and I don't think that 2021 is that much different mm-hmm. astrologically. I mean, you know, you know what I mean? Not, I'm not saying it's different. Not the, It's not the same astrologically, but I think it's equally as intense astrologically. Um, yeah. Who knows, but we're not man. astrologers. We are amateur astrologers. We would love to have a someone who does really study astrology exclusively on here. So if you know anybody that's cool, let us yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, we haven't had like a um, hardcore astrologer. That'd be really awesome. So well, you had mentioned book earlier that every zodiac sign has a, a frequency for magic. And the planet it's in has a specific type of um, magic that you would have a a predisposition for so for example if your mars is an aries you would be really good at magic for commanding spells that involve new project um getting raises getting attention and protection magic but on the flip you can also not do your spells based off of where the planets are astrologically so for example if you your mars is an aries like in general, like not your Mars and Aries, like if Mars is an Aries, it would line up great with doing a protection magic spell together. So that's some more like advanced witchcraft, like hardcore. <laughs> I mean, hardcore, yeah. I should say. That's next level, next level. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you could perfectly time, not just with the moon. So everybody talks about the moon. Oh, full moon do this, da, 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 da. Well, there's other planets that have influences as well. So you can time it based off of where planets are with what type of magic you're doing and to make it more potent but that's what the elements are in our charts that is what it is guys i'm sure there's other stuff to it but that is a great summary of what it means for us and what it means we're working on